My name is Ida Kavafian, and it's very difficult for me to say this, but this is my 33rd year as the Artistic Director of Music from Angel Fire. Uh, clearly, I'm in love with the place and the festival, and it has been a great journey. Always um, coming back to great music played by great musicians in a beautiful place and for an amazing audience with a true community spirit and a community uh, love. It's a very unlikely place, Angel Fire, to have a world-class festival. We only have around a thousand year-round residents. But our impact really is all over the northern part of this state. We call ourselves Music From Angel Fire. We are based here, but we have regular concerts in Taos, in Raton at the Schuller Theater, in Las Vegas. We do outreach in all of the area schools in Raton, in Las Vegas, in Cimarron, in Eagle Nest, Mora. We have a lot of presence, especially with our young artists. One of the unique things about this festival is its outreach and education. Often, this is the first live classical music they've ever experienced. I have such a great group of, of young artists to choose from, from the Curtis Institute. We've had a group now, uh, The Brass Project. They've come out here for three years in a row and they have done a spring residency as well. And I'm very, very proud to be able to continue that residency. They build relationships with, uh, with the band members of these schools, the Cimarron High School and Pam Towery Church. And she credits uh, our program with helping her uh, to reach a, a tremendous level and win some competitions statewide. Reaching an audience is, is an important part of my mission as a composer. Much like for the brass guys, you know, in, in their playing, they want to be reaching new audiences with their playing. And so um, it's great to have a chance to come to Music from Angel Fire where those outreach concerts are such a big part of the central mission. Now we've done over 80 uh, school concerts just here in northern New Mexico alone. It's infectious the kind of energy and excitement there is for hearing live music. The kids in New Mexico are always extremely fascinated as um, to what we're showing them. Some of them have music programs, some of them don't, and it's just really fun to, to play for you know, generally third and fourth graders who are just really into what you're doing. I think this, this program is a great educational experience for audiences, for kids, but also for us as young artists. We get to work with, um, with all the faculty that are here. I think there's a lot of supportiveness in this uh, environment. I'm particularly proud of our commissioning program. I'm Kenji Bunch. Uh, the piece we're going to play for you is called Shadow Box. There are festivals that are much bigger than ours with much larger budgets that really do very little in terms of new music. All music was new at some point, and we've had some of the top, most respected composers that are alive today that I have been able to commission with the help of the Bruce E. Howden American Composers Project. Bruce's widow, Hilde Howden, is one of our angels, and she is not just into commissioning a new work from a, a known composer, but also from a young artist composer. So we have two world premieres each summer at this little festival, and the pieces that we have commissioned have been played all over the world.
The festival kind of began with a group of people in the, na in the community who had moved here and they all played instruments. I play in the Santa Fe Ch uh, Chamber Music Festival now and in the early 80s. And when I started coming out here, uh, my sister was already here. One day this group was in Harold Geller's house gallery, art gallery, and we're just visiting with him and asking if he knew anyone who might be interested in uh, leading a musical group. And as I understand it, Ani Kafavian was in the gallery that day. And uh, she was in a, an art gallery in Taos. And interestingly enough, um, somebody recognized her and said, you know, there was this fledgling, uh, new, brand new festival. It's really struggling and they need um, executive direction. And, and my sister Ani immediately thought of her friend John Jovando and they asked John to take it over, and John immediately asked me to do the artistic part. The next couple of years, of course, financially, uh, were really tight for them. So on December the 22nd, 1987, there were five of this group who took out second mortgages on their homes in order to proceed with the festival for the next year and they took out a $28,000 loan and then they paid it back in, on September 30th, 1991. These are the ashes from burning the loan. So I think that's quite a story, that there were a number of people who were willing to sacrifice their homes in order to have this festival continue, and it did. I think one of the reasons this uh, festival works in this tiny uh, community is the um, volunteer base that we have. As you see, men putting up the stage, taking the stage down, the office is staffed strictly by volunteers who run the office, do the tickets. When you talk about a working board, there's not a board that works harder than this board. My relationship uh, working with the board has been wonderful because they are our volunteers, they are our the institutional history, they know everyone in the community. And I think they're working towards the, the concerts and the health of the festival gives them this sense of ownership. Well, people have discovered how wonderful it is to make music in the mountains. But somehow this combination here is magical. It's really magical. This is a very small town with a very small population, and yet we get these fabulous musicians. They are world-class musicians who come here every year and seem to love to be here with us. Well, that's the whole festival. This group of musicians who most of them, as I'm sure you know by now, have been coming for 34 years. Um, have, this is a family. We dinner with the musicians, uh, hike, dog walks, uh, play golf with them. It's like coming home when they arrive in you know, the middle of August. How does something like this exist here? And you have to just come back to the music. That's the answer to everything the quality of the music, the quality of the musicians, and the desire of, of the community here to have uh, a world-class festival.